Uh, okay, it's Chris Roberts here for Fight Up TV. I'm joined by Shane McGuigan now, Stings. Yeah, good, thanks, mate. Obviously, we're in Glasgow here, had a Josh Taylor's <coughs> fight on Saturday yeah. in the World Boxing Super Series. Um, how's he looking? Looking really good, yeah, looking forward to Saturday night now. He's um, raring to go, so it's been a long camp, but it's been sort of straight off the postal fight. We had a couple of weeks out and then straight back in the camp, and had a good three, three months now, so. Um, been great. Do you think Josh has got too much for, for Ryan, obviously based on the opponents that he's fought, his amateur pedigree, you know, Ryan's kind of not fought out of America or not as yeah. far as I'm aware. Yeah. Do you think he's got too much for Ryan? I wouldn't, I wouldn't read into too much about him not fighting out of America because I, I know he boxed you know, for the US team and he was, a, he was obviously well-travelled amateur so that in itself just would eliminate that. It's more, he's, he's come here to win, there's no doubt about that Ryan Martin um, and that's going to be great for us. And I feel like depending on how he approaches the fight, if he wants to try and box in the back foot um, you know, or if he wants to, recently he sort of stood and had it a little bit more since, since teaming up with Sanchez. So we're prepared for both both Ryan Martins. That's going to be a, which, whichever he chooses to to, to take to, to the ring on Saturday night. But I believe just the speed, the you know Taylor's got the speed of a featherweight, um, and he's and he's punching hard. But he's, because he's such a sharp shot, he's punching hard. He's, extremely accurate he's now filled right into the light welterweight division he's a huge lump although martin's a big guy as well so i feel like it's break it down and on on all different levels i believe he ticks he beats him on on everything um and you know the fact that he's a southpaw as well makes him that little bit more tricky um so i, I feel like it could be a distance fight i think um you don't get to the, this level in america in uh, where Ryan Martin is, you know, he was, he was, he was a big prospect, he's got Tom Loeffler behind him, he's got some big people behind him, obviously he's, they've seen some, some good things in him, um, but I just believe the, the pedigree's with us and I believe that he's going to come out victorious and uh, yeah, do you I'm going to beat him on points. Do you think there's any synergies between when Tyler Crawford came over to, to Scotland and fought Ricky Burns and he was kind of a prospect at the time, you know, hot yeah. prospect. Yeah. He obviously didn't have the sort of pedigree that yeah. he has now. Yeah. There's sort of some, some synergies between that and Ryan Martin and kind of him coming in over here to look to prove himself. Not really, because I don't believe he's as good as Terence Crawford and I also don't be I believe that Josh Taylor's better than Ricky Burns. Um, so, um, you know, I just think there's not going to be much comparison in terms of that. But there's, like you see Timothy Bradley come over and, and uh, beat uh, Junior Witter. You know, there, there's a lot of good American fighters that have come over in the past and, and uh, sort of established, had their big wins over here and then taken it back. And, and, and but you know, we're going to stop a, we're going to stop him in his dreams to do that. So um, we're not just. You know, we, we've been to this tournament with the belief that Josh Taylor beats every single person in the tournament, and it's 30 and 0. You know, he's, he's, he's inexperienced in terms of the amount of fights, but the caliber of people he's boxed and the acid test he's already had. He's had a 50-50 acid test against Davies. He stopped him in. You know, he's, he's stopped him uh, in the seventh. You know, you've got um, former world champions in Vasquez. Yeah, he's not a massive guy. He was a he was a really a lightweight, but uh, yeah. Then he's had Postal as well, who also you know said to us after the fight, "That's the best shape I've ever been in. That's that's the best me. You know, you've been the best version of me." So. Um, and he's taken a, he's taken a lot from those fights, you know, um, and that's going to stand us in good stead. You know, he's done the distance actually only for the first time in that last fight, but he finished the last four or five rounds extremely strong mm -hmm. um, and overcame you know that, that frustrating style of Postal. So, um, extremely confident as a coach, you know, as a guy that's been working with him because what I've seen in the gym, he's always been able to do. But you know, it's, it's only until the last few fights that he's. You know, he's been showcasing it, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, on the on the big stage. Would you say he was the favourite for this tournament? So obviously, yeah. some you know massive fighters, you know, massive yeah. fights for him to have, yeah. uh, particularly on the other side as well. The draw yeah. is he the favourite for this tournament? Well, I think um, I think Regis Progress was was him and Progress were the favourite. I'm sure if you went to the bookies in the states, Progress would because they know him more. And if you go to the bookies over here, they'll pick Josh Taylor. But you know that in itself, these two that's. I think they're rightfully seeded number one and two, but you've also got Carol Relic, who's you know, proven himself at the top level. You know, you've got uh, you know, you, you, you've got uh, Baroncheck that just had a great win against Yigit, um, looked extremely physically strong and stuff. So that's obviously our path is that Baroncheck route if we get you know, when we get past um, Ryan Martin on Saturday night. But 
it's um, you know, it's one step at a time. That's the problem with this tournament. You can look too far ahead. You can sort of try and map your map, map the route, but uh, you just got to get get over it. Not it's, it's just like boxing. You got to take every single round as it comes. You have got to make sure you're focused and, and not let the the um, your your eyes sort of wander. And how exciting is it to be involved in a tournament like this, the World Boxing Super Series? Carla talked yesterday about yeah. sort of you know the politics and boxing and getting in the way of fights. But kind of that looks like away yeah. from that with this tournament. How exciting is it to be involved in this tournament, particularly off the back of a successful season one? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and obviously I was a part of season one with George, so I uh, got a fight to the final, didn't get the victory, but uh, I've, I've experienced it firsthand, and um, it's a great tournament to be in. As I said, you know, he can, he's entering this tournament as a, you know, he's a mandatory for the WBC title um, before he entered the tournament, but he's going to come away with it. I believe he's going to come away with it being a, a unified world champion. Do you know what I mean? He's going to have the WBA and the, and the IBF at the end of it. So, and that's it. it that's it, effectively would be in 16 fights. I mean, you don't really have that opportunity, and the WBSS has given us that platform to, to pick those belts up. Um, and that's why everyone's so eager to jump in and, and, and be a part of it. Plus, there's really good money in it, and it's and it's you know 10, 12 months. They try and get it done within the 12 months. You know, it's a short turnover, which is really going to favour someone like Josh Taylor, who's a young 27, he's fresh, he hasn't gone over miles in the clock. It's a gym rat, you know, I can't get him out of the gym. He's always ringing me up. I come down one or two weeks after his training camp um, and after his fight, so it's going to favour guys like him. You know, I know Burnett's of that nature as well. You know, he's huge uh, capacity for training, so favours young sort of gym rats that are. Uh, Keeping themselves active and have that world world class ability. Yeah, yeah, and obviously, you know, you mentioned you know George obviously mm -hmm. in the back of the first series, uh, tough fight obviously against Callum Smith. Yeah, yeah. Where is he kind of mentally now? I know it's been a month since that event. Um, yeah. The dust has kind of settled on it. Have you spoke to him? Where kind of where do you find you? Yeah, yeah, we still go and running once or twice a week. He's on holiday at the moment, um, so he's just taking a, a well earned rest. You know, George is been a pro since you know he's 20 21 years of age and he's, he's 30 you know now he's not he's, he's not an old man he's that he's 30 he's still uh, you know he's, he's he's done so much in this sport it's such a from, from when he was such a young kid so uh, he deserves a, you know a good six months off four to six months off let himself uh, decide you've got people that are taking a year two years off and just sort of sat and, and seen if they got that hunger in the belly you, know, you, you don't know that after a month you don't know after too much you gotta let yourself settle and see where your head's at and people's mind and uh, changes all the time so yeah he's um, he's still got huge ability he's still got still got fights he's still got fights in him 100% and he's still got um, huge fights he can be a part of but mm. we're just gonna let him rest and see where he's at and the um, most important thing is you know is his is, is, his mindset. Yeah, so he yeah. needs to he needs to, needs to figure that out himself. Listen, Jamie Wigan, thanks for talking to Fight Up TV. Cheers, Good luck mate. on Saturday. Hope Appreciate it all goes well. Thanks Thank for your you. time. Cheers, Good mate. luck. Cheers. Good man. Bye.